Yeah, what is going on, everybody? We are back with another episode of From My Experience podcast. <sighs> yeah, this is this is going to be a great episode. Make sure you are ready to get some nuggets, some some positivity. Um, very very teachable moment happened uh, in the uh, the public sphere this week. Of course, we most of the world knows what happened between Will Smith and Chris Rock. We, because I have two special guests with me, are going to be talking about that, but also just talking about conflict resolution in general because there are more. There's more than one way to handle a situation, um, and surrounding that situation, man, there's just a lot of speculation. Some facts, some stuff unproven, some stuff we know, some stuff we don't know, and we're just gonna talk about this. Um, but first, I want to thank you all, those of you who like, share, subscribe, FME underscore podcast on Instagram, those of you who are in the group from my experience podcast on Facebook. Thank you for the feedback and thank you for joining the conversation. And I want to give a shout out to our affiliates, Acre, Gold, Garners, Garden, and Jot forms if you want to support the show you can shop with our affiliates using our affiliate links and affiliate codes in the description now without further ado ladies and gentlemen i have two very special guests joining me to tackle this topic i have mentioned their names several times on this show uh, these are two of the most important people in my life who have helped me get through some tough times. And these are two people that I consider qualified professionals in various fields of life and in various fields of profession, which is why I asked them to join me. And I'm glad that they have decided to join me to discuss this topic. Ladies and gentlemen, we have my mentor, my big bro, Mr. Corwin Jay Millett, broker, owner of Exit Realty, Low Country Group. And we have my brother, who is working on a dynamic, revolutionary app, Pass the Peas. The link is in the description. Make sure you follow that Instagram page, Mr. Carl Van. Fellas, what's going on? Man, incredible, man. <laughs> CV, thank you so much for having us on. Of course, of course, of course. CV, what's going on with you, man? Thank you, thank you, man, for having me on again, too, man. Um, everything is good, brother. I'm well. I am well. <laughs> yes, sir, how you be? <laughs> man, I'm tired, man. Work been kicking my butt. Like, I, you know, y'all two know I just got home like 30 minutes ago. It, it was a long day today, man, but... Um, thank y'all for joining me. Um, I, I consider y'all uh, qualified for this discussion. And I know people are like, what you mean qualified? People can talk about what they want. I figure since, you know, we're talking about Will Smith, Chris Rock, and Will Smith is a married man who was defending his wife, which is, you know, what the public perception is or how people feel about it. I wanted to talk to men who were married, who have experience in marriage, who have wives, because I feel like... That is a different level of a relationship, and that is experience that I do not have. So I wanted to definitely get two brothers <laughs> who have that type of experience to speak on this. Um, now, y'all know we love to promote positivity on the show, so we're going to start with positivity. We're going to end with positivity. That's not to say that we're going to be negative in between that, but... Black excellence is real, and we definitely want to shine a light on that. So again, this episode is going to be focusing on conflict resolution, our thoughts and feelings of, you know, what happened with that situation. Um, we're going to share our personal experiences, if we've ever been in those types of situations. And then again, we're going to end with some more positivity. But the first positive thing I want to start out with, and then we'll get into our topic, <sighs> Miss Katanji Brown Jackson's the first black woman to be nominated to the Supreme Court Justice, and she was nominated by President Biden. <laughs> Congratulations to her. That is a huge milestone. I love to see my people out here achieving 
and continuing to break ground and to break down barriers. Um, and I pray that everything goes well with that for her. Um, but again, we wanted to start with positivity. So please look up that story, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to follow it and give you all updates on the next episode uh, to make sure, you know, I give her her just due. And like I said, when we finish our discussion, I have some more things I want to highlight. Um, so, <sighs> gentlemen, this past week, woo-wee, the Oscars. Uh, Chris Rock was on the stage. He was hosting. He cracked a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith, who is Will Smith's wife. Will Smith got up shortly after the joke, slapped Chris Rock across the face, and went back to his seat. Um, he then yelled, keep my wife's name out your effing mouth. Chris Rock said it was a G.I. Jane joke. He repeated, keep my wife's name out your effing mouth. <laughs> and he said... Uh, what did he say? I will, or that's what I'm going to do. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to play that clip, but also some people have speculated that this may have stemmed from a jo jokes that Chris Rock cracked in 2016 when Jada Pinkett Smith was boycotting the Oscars. Now, between 2016 and 2022, we have no idea what the relationship is between the Smiths and Chris Rock. We don't know if they talk. We don't know if they text. We don't know. But those are the only things that seem to be connected to the situation. So just for context, I'm going to play what Chris Rock said in 2016 first. Then I'm going to play what happened this week on the Oscars. And then we'll have a talk about that. Everybody good with that? Anybody got anything they need to say before I get into that? No, sir. I'm in there. I'm good. All right. So this is the clip from 2016. Jada says she's not coming, protesting. I'm like, is, is she on a TV show? Jada's gonna boycott the Oscars. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. <laughs> I wasn't invited. I mean, so that's that's what he said in 2016. Let me. Uh, I'm sorry. I need to preface this, y'all. We gonna laugh. Okay, yeah, now, we, yeah. don't. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. Some funny stuff. <laughs> uh, listen, y'all. Y'all know in this day and age when stuff happens, the memes, the jokes. I got so many memes and stuff. We're going to laugh, but we understand the severity of what happened. And we're going to get some serious conversations. So don't take the laughter as they're not serious. They think it's a joke. We know as black men that that was some real stuff. There is a black black men in particular know that there was a lot of layers to what we saw. But. Some of this stuff was funny, man. So, all right. That's what he said in 2016. I'm going to play what actually happened during the Oscars. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> that joke didn't even make it. That was, a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. <laughs> Nick, my name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> oh, I can, oh, okay. All right, so... That was that was it, the raw and uncut moment. So, <clears throat> again, to add more context, and I didn't know this either, Jada Pinkett Smith suffers from alopecia, which um, I talked to one of my friends about it. One of the symptoms is the loss of hair. Um, she said, one of my friends told me that there's also other things that go on with that that most people don't know about, but it's a loss of hair. So that was to a lot of people, and obviously to Will in that moment, an insensitive joke. It did come out later. Uh, I listened to The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the guy said he spoke to Chris Rock on the phone, and Chris Rock says he did not know that she had alopecia. So this is after 
you know, all this happened. Nobody knew any of this. And again, you know, that's the conversation he said he had with Chris Rock. We, I can't prove or disprove that. But that's another reason kind of like when these things happen, I like to let time go by to get some more information because it has shifted the way I look, I viewed and thought about it. But that's what we have, gentlemen. Um, I... <laughs> I'm still in shock. I'm still in shock, honestly. Like, yeah. So, what? What are your? I guess what was your initial reaction when you heard it? When you thought about it? When you saw it? Um, I'll start with you, Corwin. Cause you. <laughs> so, so look here. So hold on. Can we cuss here? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Cause let me let me get that out. Cause I might drop a few. So you know, you sent me that that video clip. Um, so, you know, you know, we engage catch up sometime in the morning, you know, early on your way out. The door <laughs> on the way to the I had to call him on that one, y'all. So I get this thing and I look at it, I'm like, wait a minute, that can't be real. But I'm like, all right, you know, my man sent it to me. He ain't gonna send me no garbage. So I hit it and I watched this thing unfold. And in my head, I said, oh, shit. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> So, so then I'm immediately like, wait a minute, let me go to the media. So I'll go to the media and that's popping off all over, yeah. you know, comments and all that stuff. And I'm gonna tell you the first thing I thought, and you know, Carl, look, I, just, I, I don't, you know, but I'm gonna tell you the first thing I thought. First thing I thought, that shit could have went 30 different ways. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking yeah. too. Yeah, and so my first thought, and I was like, well, you know, that's the version we got. You know, because look here, it could have been a brawl. It could have been somebody choked out. It could have been somebody, you know, definitely injured. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It yeah. could have been any number of things that could have could have, could have taken place in that one moment versus just that. So that's the version of what we got. So we got to deal with that and go forward. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you messed me up with that. What? what was that? <laughs> you? Hold on. Hold on. What the fuck? <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I don't even watch the Oscars. And my yeah. wife was like, she pulled me, she was like, man, they performing so-and-so. And I, so they were supposed to perform some song from Encanto. And my son wanted to see it. So she letting them stay up late. And we end up watching that. And when that shit happened, first I was like, did he open hand smack him? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there's a couple of things we cannot do in the black community. You don't spit on nobody. And you don't smack me, punch me like a man. Like, so I was like, nah, he, that the way it looked, it looked so controlled too. I was like, well, he didn't, he wasn't trying to hurt him. And then he turns around and he walks off like this is a Hollywood movie. Like he just walked out. Like, you know, if he had a coat on, he would have flipped his lapels and walked out. Like, no, this ain't no movie. Do you know what would happen if you turn your back on a man that you just hit? Yeah. So that was my first thoughts. And Jessica was like, what really just happened? I was like, yo, we got to talk about this right now. Because <laughs> like, I'm trying to process this. And Chris is like, you can tell he had like, you know, some things going on by his voice. Yeah, of course. He was frustrated. He didn't know how to really, you know what I mean? Yeah. I really didn't know how to act at that point. But that was my first reaction. I was like, this isn't real. Like this man, and he didn't treat it like a real moment. Like him turning his back, let me know that, you know, he knew he was safe. <laughs> That's why I was really upset with the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I my well, y'all were lucky. Um, my girlfriend sent it to me when she was getting off work. I didn't see it till I woke up for security patrol at three forty in the morning. So my black ass could not go back to sleep because you know I looked at it about fifteen times, got on the computer before I knew it. It was five thirty. I said I gotta get me another hour, in. and I'm like, oh my god, hey. <laughs> I couldn't put my phone down, yo. Like I was like, wait, what? What happened? But you know what? Uh, my first teachable moment was it. A lot of people find it hard to really stop and think, and a lot of people have an absolute view on right versus wrong. I think right versus wrong is very subjective sometimes, and I was just I there was like a clear line of oh he wrong, oh he right, and so many opinions were popping off, man. And I'm like y'all don't know neither one of these dudes. Y'all don't know nothing. Like, y'all just saw what everybody else saw in a moment, and y'all immediately judged and picked a side mm -hmm. with no information, no context, no nothing. I'm like, all right, I just sat back and kind of just watched. Like, I know, I picked a side. 
Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, and I'm not faulting nobody for picking a side because I mean, all of our experiences are different, but I, it's it's wow. So you know, with that, so something you just said, I'm gonna tag that, and I'm gonna tell you what I did. But you know, that's you know, I, I liken that you know to how we'll take you know not to you know go go deep in, but people faith based man will take a scripture and think and and act like they don't read the whole book or the whole chapter to have an understanding of the context. Mm -hmm. So we take that one snippet, that one boom, and we're making decisions. And and, and what I did, man, I saw it. I don't know if you saw it when I when they went by because I know you were in some of the groups and stuff or. You know, some of the stuff still on the back office, um, back office with us. Mm -hmm. But I immediately, hey, look, I saw people putting memes up. Hey, ho, ho, my my admin staff, hey, we're not putting any memes up. We're not, we're not falling subjective to this. Cause this is the version that like I said earlier, this is the version that we got. I know, I know personally, man. Well, I'm old school with this shit. What yeah. hold on? What happened? Man, let me fuck your ass up right now. <laughs> get this over with. Exactly. Right now, we gonna tear this whole motherfucking stage up. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that wasn't that. I was like, man, Chris ain't swinging nothing. Nothing. I thought he was gonna do something, man. Lord, I wanted him. To, I swear, I wanted. I wanted him to at least like have the afterthought and like run him down. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, and get him, man. So and so I, and I understand it. Now me, I'm like, now nah, I really didn't want that to happen. One, I ain't yeah. want none of it to happen. Yeah, but the version that we got, look, let's take this, let's move on, let's learn from it, you know what I'm saying, and let's do something different. Because, I mean, one, I mean, that was a national stage, man. I'm a whole, fuck that, it was a world, world stage. Yes, yes. And in that moment, when everything was black run, we got to act like colored folk. Yeah, that, and I mean, it's, it's by two of the most beloved people in white eyes. I mean, you got to think, yeah. Chris Rock is in every Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? White America loves him. And yep. then you got Will Smith, who has been in everything. He done hit everything, music and film. Yeah. And I mean, I love him. Yeah. So in, in, in inevitably, both reputations have been damaged, have been tarnished by that moment. So one is portrayed as a victim. One is portrayed as a predator. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got predator prey. So, you know, I mean, that's really everything in life anyway is predator prey. So now we got prey. So... He's going to be embraced. He's going to be comforted. All this other shit is going to happen. However, there's all there's going to be that that slim margin of public opinion. Well, you know, you you said something derogatory. She has al alopecia. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so technically, you can't win. There's going to be a faction. It's going to be <laughs> yeah. totally against them. And there's another faction that's going to say, "Man, I'm so sorry. You got slapped. The slap. The sh somebody slapped the shit out of you on, on world TV." Yeah. You know. But then on the other side, hey, you should have you should have smacked fire out of them. And then other persons, man, why the hell you up there smack that dude? You know <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's so. I'm still going through it, man. Um, now the one thing that people have also been saying is, you know, Red Table Talk is Jada Pinkett Smith's show, and she's aired out a lot of their personal business. I'm assuming I don't watch it, so I'm, I would hope. That she has these uh, these conversations with Will before she talks about these things, but they brought out a lot of personal stuff, and Will has been getting clowned very hard as a man. His manhood has been challenged. A lot of people have been talking trash about him because of things that have happened in his marriage, but that is that's their marriage. Yes, they're putting the information out there, but that is their marriage, and if it is working for them, it is working for them. Um, and you know, the, the other thing I, I, I saw was people saying, oh, if that was such and such, he wouldn't have done that. If this, if he was a white guy, he wouldn't have done that. Why he ain't had his energy for these people. I'm like, do y'all know if Will Smith has ever, Will Smith has ever been in the room with some of these keyboard warriors, with some of these people who do internet interviews? He was in the, he was in the room with someone who says something that set him off. Y'all don't know what he would have done. And life has taught me never say never. Because I've said never a couple times and did both of the things that I said I would never do, right? But the one meme that stands true, though, is if The Rock was up there. Like, not Chris Rock. The Rock was up there. <laughs> he wouldn't have did that. He wouldn't have did that. I'm very confident in my, in my squad in the pretty, but I wouldn't have did that neither, though. He might have yelled at He might have said something. I, I don't know. He was going to stay in his seat. He was not going to get up. I but, promise you that. But, but you know what, CV? I have seen you. Now, we all have seen... You know, videos, uh, world star where dude know he gonna get washed, but he go he walk up to Buddy anyway. 
Will Smith a little smarter than that. I, I just gonna give him that much credit. I, I mean, mean, you say that, but he did what he did. Yeah, but that was Chris Rock. I Maybe mean, Chris Rock weighed 150 pounds wet. I mean, come on. You know it's true. So so two things on, on that, I man. can't call two it. Things. So look here. As a matter of fact, hold on three things. I got to get start with the rock and work back. <laughs> yeah, man, I'd have been a whole different. Look here, I'd have been, yeah. whole, I'd have been sitting in that chair like, all right, should I go up here and smack this? I, <laughs> right, I don't look here. I don't want to get get my candy ass smacked down. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, you know, you know, but the, the the two the two things is, and just being just real talk about it, man. We cannot expect to have, we can't expect to air air something and not have a conversation about it. Yeah. We can't bring our dirty laundry, if you will, to the red table. Or we can't talk about our marriage at the table, and then not expect for other pick other people to talk about it too. Yep. We also we also, you know, on the back side of that, and this is one of the first things I said. And I you know I don't know who maybe there's a sign seat. I don't know how the hell this thing here worked per se at, at the Oscars, but man, you sit in front row in front of a comedian. Mm. I know my damn self, I'm going to a comedy show. I ain't buying no damn ticket on the fucking front row. What the hell <laughs> fucking front row? Cause I know exactly what's going to, ha- what's going to happen. When that dude f- trying to figure out his material, he going to start fucking with people in the audience. I want to be far enough back that I can see him and be entertained and feel like I'm a part of the show, but I don't want to be a fucking part of the show. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's exactly. real. No, that's real. I mean, hey, I've never Front seen role? At, a comedy, uh, at a comedy show. Hell no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, concert, yeah, but not a comedy show. No. <laughs> that's another point of view. I didn't. I never. I hadn't heard that one, and that yeah. is very true. Go, go to a comedy show, but don't. But see, see that's why I said Ricky Smiley first day. One of the first day of comedy shows I went to. Ricky Smiley. He that dude was on the stage, and somebody said something. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, that man, that dude, that dude started picking picking people across that front row in the audience. Started to tear people head <laughs> off, man. I mean, I'm sitting, I'm sitting back and over to the side somewhere. So look here, I'm out of view. Me and who, I, I, man, look here. Now nah, look here. I'm over there like, man, see, you bought this damn seat. The guy, man, 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 the guy working the lights gonna shine that joint on you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like nobody wants that action. So I mean, <laughs> but you know the what, Corbin, off of what you said, you were saying you, you gotta expect to have a conversation about it, right? The one thing I'm finding though is now they're using that to kind of nar- push the narrative to give sympathy. Oh, well, he had so much going on. Yep. This is, and it's not about this. But see, look, you know, so the very same thing that they used, you know, it used and said, oh, we're open about our relationship and this and talking about the power in that. Now they're using it as a part of his sympathy card for how we're supposed to feel about, you know, him acting out in this particular situation. And I ain't, I ain't giving no sympathy for it. Man, look at it's so fair. That's true. So one that same damn thing, man, that people want to make their their shield will become their damn crutch. So you yeah. want you, you want to make you want to say that your openness in your in your relationship, you know, sh- should quote unquote it protects you. You know, it's a great thing and blah 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 blah. But then when somebody addresses it, now you want it to be a damn crutch. Well, you should feel sorry for me. Look, Dad. Look, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Look here. I saw the clips. I can't watch that kind of shit because that look, I didn't do that <laughs> stuff well. But I saw the damn clip when she sat there and called what was going on an entanglement. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking, and I'm I'm actually literally sick to my stomach thinking, like, how can how this dude must feel? Yeah. So he hurt. You can see the hurt. I can see the hurt. Let me say it yeah. that way. You can see hurt, you see pain, you see all this stuff. Now, fast forward, here we are. And now we got to counterbalance that. And that's the position sometimes we, as men, I believe, find ourselves in, man. We're, we're put in a position, we're challenged by life and all that stuff. I always have this conversation about, you know, we fight dragons all day outside. You don't want to come home and fight a dragon too. And if I got a damn dragon in my home, you know, that I got to deal with and contend with as well as all them dragons outside, eventually, man, I just start lashing out at every damn thing. Yep. Because I don't have any peace. Yeah. And that's yo, y'all. When y'all watched that clip back, did y'all peek game like Will was laughing, right? And then yeah. she did her eye roll, and and then they cut. I'm imagining in that in that cut moment, that's when she gave him the hey, you better go handle this. You know what I mean? Like I think that she must have like triggered him off. Yeah, he, then- he must have looked over. Um, some people's like. That might have been that nervous laugh, like, oh, really? All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, he like, looked nervous at all. He was sitting back. He I saw it. 
Yo. I, I saw it, man. Um, I don't think he was gonna do nothing. I really don't. I, before, before she had that reaction. That now, I, I must say, like if that was my girlfriend or my wife, that look, it was more than just the eye roll. Like she looked, she looked hurt. She looked insulted. In that moment, and that that because that was I was so focused on the slap. I'm like, all right, let me really break this down. And I looked at her face several times. I was like, I don't know a husband that can look over and see that face and not do nothing at all. I'm not saying get up and hit nobody, but yeah. if your wife made that face, you either gonna have a conversation with buddy that made her look like that, or you gonna have a long night. So, True. so, but there's levels to this thing. Yeah. And so the reality, in my opinion, it's my pain, my pain. So I understand what you're saying. So for us, man, blah, 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 blah. You know, if I'm in the street, man, somebody say something, do something. Oh, man, look at what, what we doing. What we doing? One of us, we going to do something. What we doing? We going to move some furniture. What the fuck we going to do? We going to do it. <laughs> so, but, you know, when you get to, to a level, there's certain things. I mean, for me, I joke with you, Rob, yeah. you know, and, and Carl, look at you going to get some of this tonight. But there's plenty of times, you know, Rob, we done been dealing with something. They're like, man, look, you just want to put hands on somebody. You know, smack whoever in business or what have you where he was he wasn't in that setting on the street with x y and z he was he was doing his business yeah his business is celebrity his business is movies fame all those things all those things tie in so that's like walking in you know you know carl you know you do photography you know that's like walking to an industry event having an altercation with somebody at some industry event and swinging out that's a whole lot different than you on the street somebody insult your wife and you know y'all have an altercation that 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 looks different. Mm-hmm. So in that setting, you already know where you are. You already know what's going on. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying he done it. I, I mean, I, I see it all perspectives. I'm not saying he did anything right. I'm not saying he's done anything wrong. I'm just trying to say there could have been different options. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. No, we could have after 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 that set. Yo, man, hey, if you don't mind, or we will, you know, look you. And and he apologized to her. And maybe that would have came out. In a, a, another joke later on, hey, look, my apologies, I didn't know, blah blah blah, but we never got that opportunity. Yeah, and you know, honestly, for me, I mean, I just felt like, and there's a lot of people like championing this, you know, women saying that they love to see a man stand up for their woman, you know, in, in that way, and they're looking at this as a chivalrous thing. One, I don't think, I, I don't see that as, you know him protecting her because one if if he really wanted to handle that i i really think the green room is the proper you know what i'm saying like in the back because if he really wanted smoke and he really wanted to put hands on this man he won't go get the do but so much up there yeah. i mean security security wasn't that far away so i'm pretty sure if he had continued you know to, to hit him again then yeah somebody would have came out there and drug him out of that spot so yeah if he really wanted that action then that's what would have happened and i think like honestly that was just for show he he wanted to show her something, or I don't know, save his face, save masculine, you know, show some masculinity in that situation, man. And I I, I think that was just a whole punk ass move, really. I was like, you hit this man on stage, why? You know what I'm saying? Now he got a decision to make whether he want to tarnish his reputation too, because if he swung back, they look at him a certain way, and we wouldn't be painting him as the victim that he uh, is being painted as right now. So. It's embarrassment. He wanted him, he wanted to embarrass him. Yeah. That's embarrassment. Do walk up to you and open, open <laughs> his in front of somebody. Yeah. That's hey. embarrassment. Millions. So he, so he so he so yo, you embarrass my wife. I'm gonna walk up here and I'm gonna embarrass you. Yeah. Yeah. So um Trash. just to put this out there, um, and this this is another thing, y'all. We please stop being so fast to hit the share button. Do your research. It don't take that long. We got Google. Google will tell you what you want to know in under five minutes. A fake Chris Rock apology has been floating around. Chris Rock did not, to my knowledge, I didn't look today. Today being March 30th, 2022. I have not seen anything from Chris Rock. But his team came out and said, hey, that apology y'all see floating around is not Chris Rock. That's fake. And I saw a lot of people sharing it. And I'm like, this is part of the problem. Now, Will Smith did... Um, apologize to Chris Rock um, via social media. I don't have the post in front of me, but he did officially apologize. So Chris Rock's side, or Chris Rock rather, because he has brothers who have spoken out, but Chris Rock hasn't said anything to my knowledge at this point. Again, I haven't looked today. Um, but that's another thing, man. Just when it comes to the, the processing of information, man, we got to 
we got to learn to stop and think and do your own research before you create your own narrative. Um, so unless y'all have something else y'all want to say about it, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit. I mean, at the end of the day, y'all, it is what it is. It happened, whether you feel it's right, whether you feel it's wrong, sh- chivalrous. Actually, I want to touch on that. The chivalr- sh- chivalrous I, 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 thing. I, 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 was about to say, I want to talk about these these backwards <laughs> women. No, I'm well, serious. I, well, go ahead. The, no, what you about to say? Well, you know, ladies, you have to be... This is something I've had to explain to women in the past, and it's not mansplaining. Um, men and women communicate differently when a man communicates something to another man it comes off different when that woman is communicating with it with them so like one thing one conversation i always have you know before i get in a serious relationship is like yo if you're talking to anybody else go ahead handle that cut that off you know what i'm saying i'm gonna handle mine cut that off if that person proceeds then let me intervene and and they always get scared they're like, well, I don't want you to. I'm like, yo, you saying you don't want this dude to call you. You don't want him to text you, but he's continuing to do it. For some reason, you're not blocking his number. Give me his number. I got this. Because men, we're taught to be persistent. Yeah, no means no. But if there's a crack, a sliver in that door, and I feel like I got an opportunity, I'm going to um, be waiting outside that motherfucker looking like, oh, I feel some heat coming out. And I'm going to keep jumping back. Because they don't take it. They just don't take it. They don't take it from y'all the way that they take it from us. Now, if, a, if I'm trying to talk to a girl and she's in a situation and, oh, well, she ain't blocked my number. I mean, she not responding. Or she might say, hey, every now and again, I think I still got a chance. But if her man call or text me, all right, that's different. Now I got smoke. So now I got a, I got a serious decision to make here. Don't Because I'm going to end up, you know, in a tussle or whatnot. I'm going to create a whole different set of issues for myself. Um, and... You know, men just handle things a certain way. And so when y'all say being chivalrous and standing up, that also comes with things. That comes with a lot of things. And danger is one of those things. Like, as you saw, Chris Rock got slapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's physical harm. Like, And that's what a lot of women think we're going to automatically resort to. It don't always have to be that. But when we take it there, we take it there. So be very careful what you ask for because you can't say, protect us or stand up for me and then try to dictate how it don't it don't always go the way you want it to go because sometimes you can try to be cordial with a dude and he want to stick his chest out and puff his chest out then it's like all right hold up partner you you about to take it to another level so just be mindful of that y'all and the same thing you know when it comes to the opposite sex like i would have no problem if a woman is bothering me well me i shut it down but if my woman wanted to say something to another woman i would let her because i know that woman will take it differently coming from her than coming from me. CB? Man, I mean, my thing with it is, brother, you know, I would love to sit down these women that are screaming chivalry. My man, that's that's how a man's supposed to show love. And I want them to look at their man. I want the man next to them. All of them. <laughs> I want to congregate. I want to do it like church. You know, the pastor say, neighbor, look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, say, are you Will Smith? That's what I want to be. The person to ask them that question is your man Will Smith, because he does not have the clout, he doesn't have the fame, the money, and if he smack him up in public, his ass going to jail. And I hope you got the bail money. Not only that, you know we live in today's society. You see how quickly that smack got heard around the world. Yeah, that nigga that lost his job. Yeah, <laughs> he got nowhere to go to work the next day, uh-huh. or his endorsement, or whatever small, or whatever thing he got going on. So it's a much bigger issue for the common man. Yes. And these women are asking us to do things that Will Smith is doing. Well, we can't do any of the other stuff that he do. This man went home to his mansion. He didn't even get it scored out. He, he went back. back. <laughs> he sat back down. Sat back down and cursed him out. And got an award. <laughs> got an award later and party. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, so this this is where there's a disconnect in in the thought process. Shiv- chivalry is chivalry you know you know ladies if y'all listen to this we got this thing all twisted chivalry is not fighting chivalry is caring for chivalry is opening the door you know you know my wife is my wife is trained man Uh, she gets to the car door she gets to a door she stops she don't touch it she stops so that is chivalry that is protection protecting compassion caring for that's the chivalry 
Defending is necessary at times, but the chivalry is in the service, man. It's in the service to, to your mate. You know what I'm saying? So guys, we got, I mean, I say guys, ladies, all this shit twisted. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this thing here right. You know, if he ain't opening the door for you, you want him to swing out on somebody? What kind of shit that is? Tell us that. Okay. That's another, that's another one of, hey, so, so Rob, that's another, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, he, ain't, he ain't open the door, but you, but you, but you expect him to swing out and fight. Yeah. You know, your car, your car tire flat and he ain't yeah. changing. You get to the gas station. How many times y'all have seen the dude sitting in the car? I've seen the gas big. station. And the girl like they pumping gas. Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all with y'all. Hey, and then you drop her ass off to work. Exactly. <laughs> and you ain't got no job. You ain't going to work. They <laughs> ain't looking for one. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, man? <gasps> oh, you know, you're raw tonight, man. What the hell, man? Half, half of the women that was saying that got a nigga they don't trust at home, and they got to go do door dashing with him just to make sure he ain't at the at the side piece house. Look, you don't turn the track. Don't turn the track on on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> I bet sitting and sitting at work like this. I'm not doing. I'm not doing this with you. <laughs> that. It's funny y'all bring that up because, you know, there's always phases to these events on social media. It's people reacting to the event, then people giving their opinion on the event, then the people that know the people giving their opinion, putting their business out there. Because I started seeing the post. Some of y'all comment commenting about Will and Jada. Your marriage falling apart now. Your man cheating on you now. Your girl cheating on you yeah. now. Why you commenting on that? So it's like, y'all, we we this oh, you when you when you engage in these things, you are walking into a glass house and you got a big ass box of rocks in your hands. Now you gonna are you gonna walk through and just watch everybody else throw these rocks and watch these shards of glass chop their ass up, or is you gonna be like, mm, you know what? I'm just gonna walk on through. Okay, treat that shit like an exhibit. Um, one of the things I always try to tell people is your opinion does not belong everywhere. It does not. And I know some husbands, some wives, some boyfriends and girlfriends saw those statuses and were giving some side eyes and some screw faces. Cause like, you ain't about that. Oh, oh that's how you feel. So mm -hmm. y'all <laughs> be mm -hmm. very careful of what y'all put out there, man. But, um, we, we have comments that we, we, we comment on, on things that's going on in other people's lives. And when you do that. You attract that that same shit to yourself. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You quick, you know, girl, I saw your man out there with such and such, all that shit. And the next time, next thing you know, you, you know, somebody calling you with the same shit about yours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you keep look, hold up, man. Look here. All right, look here. You need to whatever. Make sure you all right. Do whatever you need to do, whatever. But let's stop, let's stop engaging in the co in the commentary and all the other stuff that we do. Because when we do that, again, we open ourselves up for the, I mean, that, that that negativity that we put out in those instances, we attract what we give, man. You give positivity, you get positivity back. You put out that bullshit and negativity and you get bullshit and negativity back. Yeah, man. And hey, you know, man, I'm, I'm such an analytical brain. So I sat down and I was like, let me look at the women who are posting. Nah, don't look at them. I just had to look at their circumstances. You know what I'm saying? I got to put together a profile and I was like, She's single, she's single, she's single, she's single. Of and then out of and then when I took a, a good number, I got to 20 and I stopped. And then I realized all of them are single. And out of the 20 dog, 17 of them had a child. And you know, baby daddy ain't even around. And I was just like, yo, this is wild. You know, and it was it was crazy. And then the dudes that were commenting saying, Yeah, I would have did that. Will was, you know, Will was on point for that. All of them is, you know, kind of hood dudes that I still know from back in the day on my Facebook. And I'm like, it makes sense. Y'all still in that mental place. Y'all ain't really elevated or grown from that. And I, it's just, so, you know, there's just a big difference in mentalities and you can really see that. And for a second, Will just slipped into that. And we know that's not him. You know, they say you got that, uh, what do they call that? The rat brain. And then when you, like, it's the thing that you revert to, like he's from West Philly, right? Like he went mm -hmm. back to, you know, that, that. I'm glad you said that. That that in, that natural instinct for him. That's what he would normally probably have done in the street, and that's cool. But the thing I was telling, oh, I'm sorry, go no, ahead. Go ahead, go go. I, the thing I told my wife, I said, you know, the consequences are greater now. Not just professionally, but people don't fight no more. You know what I mean? I smack you, you shoot me. That ain't equal. That's the no, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> that's the so, other thing, ladies. Are you prepared to deal with that? Because what if he he? 
Oh uh, yeah, run up, smack him, but will he yeah. get his ass whooped? Yeah, if he get his ass beat, like I hope if your dude decides, because you know, there's a bunch of dudes yapping right now saying that they would have did this and that. Please, brothers, pick the right fight. Please pick the right <laughs> fight. Because there's a lot of dudes that look like me that's walking around and they don't realize how long I've trained the martial arts. I'm gonna whoop their ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they got really serious decisions to make. I seen a video, I think Rob sent me that it was a very unsuspecting skinny white dude that had unbelievable hit power. Yes. I was like, we will knock somebody the fuck out. But let somebody go smack him. You mm-hmm. have to know what you're getting into. It's not mm-hmm. it's not the same world we used to live in. We ain't in high school no more. We're when somebody hits you, you might not get back up. But here's the thing. We I mean, we seem to think that I mean we think life has become there's no there's there's no it's not value valuable anymore. You know, you know, people, you know, play so many video games and do all this other stuff. And the violence is such such a normal occurrence that they think, you know, seemingly, well, you know, we get a do over. You know, I shoot this dude and, you know, we just do this shit over again. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be all right. Like, he, like, yeah. oh, 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 he gonna get, he, look, here, I killed him, but he's going to get back up and be in the next scene. That ain't yeah. how that thing work. No. <laughs> Not how that works at all. No. They got it. They got it. Completely different outcome, man. We we have got to we we have got to we we got to pause. You know, Rob, you talked about this earlier. It seemed like you're looking to get set up on something else, but I got to go ahead. Um, but you know, it 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 you know it looks. You know, we we got to learn to think, man, and 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 process. We can't automatically react and think about. It. And granted, in that particular instance, again, we don't know what that man was going through. That man, that man got a that man got a whole. We are, we got stressed. But that dude got a whole hell of a lot more stress than we do. He do. And that whole situation is a lot more volatile or was a lot more volatile than what we normally deal with in a day to day. But it could have been different, man. Yeah. yeah. What what if what if people well, I don't know if they're allowed to carry in there. What if that dude was allowed to carry in there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It would have been what if Chris was allowed to carry. Shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, but um Jessica Jessica found a podcast where Chris uh, Rock was just talking about his past, and this was you know released before this whole event where he was just talking about you know he remembers a situation where he got bullied and he was getting picked on and he took a brick in his book bag and he smacked the person in the face with the brick and continued to stomp him out Mm -hmm. see that's the person that you really don't want to mess with because you might get them that day Mm -hmm. but they're gonna come back and that's that's what we got to remember like there's going to be consequences and just like it was a consequence for chris saying what he said well, now there, there could be a consequence from Will. I don't think that Chris mm-hmm. is going to go any further because he would definitely go to jail. But uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that um, y'all both touched on something, man. This is another thing y'all have to think about. We don't know these people personally. We know things that they've done in their career. They've entertained us. We supported them with with our money. Um, but they're still humans, and they had a human experience. Um, and where you're from and how you're brought up. That stuff is ingrained in you. Like you mentioned West Philly. Like I went I went through middle school and high school in Philly. And some of that stuff is still in me. Like it was it was kill or be killed um in certain situations. Like I I had to toughen up quick. Like my first day of high school, some senior grabbed me by my book bag. It was six or seven of them. Them mugs must have been eight feet tall. Cause I wasn't finished growing yet. He hand, <laughs> one of them handed me a brown paper bag and said, "Yo, young boy, walk this across to the courtyard to the bowl over there." You, I was about to do it. Like y'all ain't about to whoop my ass. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm about to push a pack. My first day of high school. Like what is happening? And but one of them kind of saw that I was shook, and he took it from me. He was like, "Nah, man, let that young boy go, man. He, nah, let him go." You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that happens, man. And then like after that, I was like, "All right." I need, like, now, even to this day, I don't care where I'm at. And when I walk out of my house, I'm cutting the block up with my eyes. Who's around here? All right, what they got on? What, you know, do I got everything on me? Like, it, 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 like, it's ingrained in me. Like, I even do that now at work. When people get caught, I'm like, hold up, yo, back up. Or like, yo, you need to sit down. You're making me nervous. Like, I still have some of that in me because of what I've been through, what I saw, and what I know people to be capable of. Now, it's not as a parent and I'm not as uh what's the word I don't I don't wear it on the surface as much as I used to when I was younger and people would tell you who knew me in college I wore it on the surface a lot because like you had to like like my dad used to say if somebody he's get hey 
Get a motherfucker up off you. That's what my dad. <laughs> get him, get him the fuck up off you. Somebody jumping you, get get that motherfucker up off you. So like, I always had to have that that bubble. But I've learned to relax. But I know that there are certain things that could probably take me there. So, you know, not making an excuse for Will, but like, you don't know what type of fight somebody has in them. You know, you never know what type of fight someone has in them. You don't know their experience and their background, which is why I'm not quick to judge. I judge. I'm human. I'm imperfect. I judge. But I have learned in life, just look at a situation. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that's about. Versus, dang, you wrong. That's messed up. Most of the time, I'm like, dang, what's that about? Um, but I digress. Fellas, question for both of y'all. Have y'all ever personally been in a situation where you've had to defend a lady's honor or defend someone's honor or mm-hmm. even yourself? Like, have you ever had, you know, a situation maybe similar to this or anything of that nature? And how did you end up handling it and how do you feel about it now? You want to go first, Corey? You you muted. I said I'm I'm gonna defer to you, my man. <laughs> uh, I mean I I, I I I mean you know it's an easy conversation, but I look at I'm yeah, I'll defer to you, man. So <laughs> I, I, okay, so I remember um I'm in the Citadel Mall of Charleston. Oh shit! And I'm I'm holding my girl's hand. I think I'm like probably probably like sophomore, junior in college, holding my girl's hand or whatever. And these dudes, they decide to walk up and they walk on the opposite side. And one of them decided to grab her hand. And I was like, I was like, hold on, fucker, did he just grab? And she was like, he sure did. Man, I dropped her hand so quick. And I was like, yo, I was like, man, like you see me with her, what the hell is your problem? He was like, man, ain't nobody want you a little hoe. I was like, oh, whoa, what the fuck did you just say? Man, look, man, I ended up about to get in a squabble with about four, five dudes. Because by the time me and him squared up, I looked, more dudes came. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is the whole situation. Like, you got a decision yeah. to make at that point. Yeah. But then, like, I think they must, somebody must have saw security because they kind of, like, dipped off. I have to say, like, they kind of backed off and, and dipped out. But I could have got my ass cut, really. because they, they was outnumbering me. But the one rule that I always know is you just got to knock that one motherfucker out. And then you figure rest out after that. So, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I was willing to fight for that. I mean, it's it's not cool for you to call my girl out her name. Yeah. And she ain't, she don't know you. She wasn't trying to talk to you. She wasn't trying to get to know you. And at the end of the day, you saw me there, but you had the nerve to still call her out her name for no damn reason. She ain't did nothing to them boys. She didn't even say nothing to them. Mm. Like, so I, I don't get it, man. I don't I don't get these people, man. Some people just feel like they entitled to a woman's uh, time, space, and her body to grab her hand. <laughs> like, that's Crazy. Just, yeah, man. So you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mess with people, man. I I just you know my my whole demeanor, you know, outside of people that know me know that you know shit. I you know, I love people. You know what I'm saying? But I don't mess with them. So I I, I have a demeanor that. I mean, just in, in passing, people just don't automatically just just fuck with me because they don't know. Yeah. Um. You know. I. You know. I haven't had a situation like that, man, since probably high school. You know. what I'm saying. I mean, it, it goes back goes back that far because outside of that, I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> you know. I look. I ain't got time to to, to all this wrestling and shit. We're gonna wrestle. Then it's gonna be serious. You know. what I'm saying. Yep. So I, I just don't I just don't do that. And even at this at this age, at this age, look, so you know, my, my, my wife has so my cousin tells stories around like how volatile I, I really am, like how, you know, when I go, I'm gone and you ain't bringing me back like, OK, I'm going to tear some shit up. My <laughs> wife has never seen that. Like, seriously, I'm look, um, I, yeah, I tell people, you know, when, when they have the conference, people start talking about it. I said, you know, you remember that scene in the Avengers where, you know, um, you know, Bruce needed to turn into the Hulk. Captain America told him, hey, I need you to get angry. And he turned and looked at him and said, I'm always angry and turned and just turned into the Hulk and went and went on. Yeah. That's me. I'm always angry. I'm always I'm always <laughs> on edge. I'm always tense. <laughs> this little thing, you know, could set me off and turn and, and turn me into that. And then we got to smash. I mean, that's what we got to do. Yeah, but see, I think it's a you know I think it's also like a um, thank you dark skinned fella, 
Like they fuck with light skinned dudes differently, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, my whole life, man. Like, you're, I, right. I, you're right. I, I, I'm I laughing because you're so right. So many fights, bro. Like I, I legit have had to fight way more times than I should have had to just because I'm light skinned, man. Be like, oh, he, he can't so, do nothing. So, so look here. In all fairness, all direct to see. So where I'm coming from, see, we country and all that stuff. So light skinned dudes, man, light skinned dudes pretty. So you gonna fight the light skinned dudes? They don't want to get dirty. You know what I mean? <laughs> see, 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 folk, man, shit. We don't look. We don't care. We he said he don't want to get dirty. <laughs> don't get dirty. Cause the light skinned dude pretty. You know what hey, I mean? Man. See? So look here, we so we had to because that's what you got to fight over. You know, another two dark skinned dudes. I right, fuck that. I don't matter. I don't mean that right there. <laughs> But the light skin and dark skin dude, man, because dark the light skin dude getting played, dark skin dude struggling. But look, it's funny when they get older, then the shit changes. <laughs> it's it's right. You still fight because <laughs> you stole his girl. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all look crazy, yeah, man. He wasn't ready for that. See, see look, look, Rob, 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 Rob on the dark skin side. See, he wasn't ready for that conversation. You didn't know. Yeah, CV, I you didn't know, know you struggled with that, man. Cause you're not even light bright. You know what I'm saying? I was the lightest one on my block. They used to call yes. me white boy. That's how bad. Then you ain't light enough to be called white boy. Come That's on, man. I promise you, yeah, you guess you get some dudes dark enough. He is. <laughs> I promise you, dog. Every day walking home, hey white boy. I'm like, what? Look at me, bro. Like, and then look at these naps, dog. I'm not white, clearly <laughs> at all. And you are very Charleston, sir. Yeah, man. <laughs> man, I couldn't live. Man. Oh my god, that is terrible, man. That's terrible. <laughs> you just took me back with that, man. It yeah, is. and look here, yeah, yeah, because we got a light skinned dude, man. That, that moved up, moved out of school, man. Probably might have been in junior, um, elementary, middle school, or or uh, junior high or something, man. That dude came in. And got all the damn girls, man. We've been Ronnie working them girls since first grade. <laughs> this dude, this dude come in and he get all the damn girls in like 30 minutes. He said we've been working us <laughs> since the first hey. grade. <laughs> we've been on the kindergarten swing, push. <laughs> <laughs> this, dude, this dude come in, ain't gotta do shit but show up. Oh man. <laughs> damn. See, well, that's that's my bad then. I wasn't trying to steal nobody girl though. I was there just trying oh to live. Oh my man. god! Serious, Y'all got to be over here crying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the test is different, man. <laughs> like I said, y'all, you never know what someone's been through. Yeah. You know, I was talking to my mom about that, man. Uh, you know, so our 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 our, our past. You know, the things that we saw. You know, there's certain things that I, I saw as a kid that you know I embraced and and you know followed that. You know, whether you know role models, whoever. And there's certain things I saw that I just not did not want to do. There's certain things, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I tell people I'm perfecting, you know, marriage. I'm, you know, third marriage, but you know, I'm extremely happy. You know, all those things. I'm, I'm a, I, you know, I'm perfecting. But I believe in the institution. I believe in certain things, and we're gonna work to perfect it. But the things that you've been through, the things that you grew up with, from it, you're gonna take something. Whether that means you duplicate or replicate the behavior, or you completely reject and encounter the behavior you still have it in you. If you witnessed abuse, if you lived in an abusive household, you know, parents fighting, all that kind of stuff, you're either going to be an abuser or you're going to be someone or other in the spectrum that does not do conflict at all. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we, and we, we, we don't, we don't, when we're looking at people, we can't see what they've been through. We think we know their story, but we don't. So we have to be mindful of that, that, Everybody, all of us have a story. We have our perceptions, our views, our beliefs are based upon those things and those experiences that we've had. Does that follow? Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. That makes sense. And that's, you know, it's funny. Will, Will Smith's book kept coming up after this incident and they were talking about him seeing the abuse of his mom. And yep. they think that, you know, he in that moment, he wanted to be her protective um, even more so because he felt like he had some power to be able to do that in this situation. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can see that being a thing, but you know, using that word protection, my job is to protect my wife, but because we're partners, I need her to protect me from myself sometimes, right? Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when I get mad about something, she might need to talk me down and make me realize that this thing is not that damn big. And mm. I think Veda's job to protect him in that moment would have been to say, babe, it's your night. 
Like, sit down. And, and I know you offended, and, and but she has to be bigger and see that this man worked for this one moment his whole damn career. He's been snubbed multiple times. And then there's so many other people like Quest Love came up and got his award and nobody's thinking about that shit because we'll just Mac Chris. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, I mean, it just changed. It just shifted the energy of the whole night. But I think that she needed to protect him in that moment. And that really bothered me because I know that I feel so confident that my wife would stop me from making a complete ass of myself and make uh, and, and let me be in a situation where, you know, I, I've ruined my career. And he didn't ruin his career, I guess, because he's still going to be Will Smith tomorrow. But for somebody like me trying to come up, that could be detrimental. That's it. Mm-hmm. That 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 definitely oh. would have been it. So so something in that, man, you know, I, you know, you know, from the faith side, man, you know, people talk about, you know, what a wife is supposed to be. Wife is supposed to be a help me, help the husband me. You know, we we get out to be blunt. I believe oftentimes we out of order. You know, it's God, husband, wife, you know, that and that umbrella co- comes out. Wife is your partner, that's true. But in God's order, you're the protector of that bride. The husband is the protector of that bride. So the you know, in in in, in context, and I never said this shit before in my life, but the reality is is that as we as men tend to take leaps, we take leaps of faith or leaps of, of action. As he went to jump out of that plane, Jada's his parachute, and she should have deployed, opened up. Oh, wait a minute, let's slow down and ease him to the ground and not let him crash, not let him just jump, fall, boom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how that that's how that works. And you know, as as you know, as 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 my wife just said yeah. in the background over here, mm-hmm. a covering, you know, you know, is is we protect, but they they're supposed to cover, they're supposed to guard us, protect us, like you said, making a complete fool of yourself. Or you know what have you? As you just mentioned, CV. That's what this thing here is about, man. That's that's that partnership. That's that help me. You know what I'm saying? We again, man, I talked about this briefly. We go out there, slay these dragons all day, man. We come home, shit. I I need you to have the cloth. Let me clean this blood off because I've been out here working my ass off all day. I don't need you, you know, coming in here and I open the door and then there's another damn dragon waiting on me because you, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying what the hell. Yeah, there's a bunch of these dragons on social media talking. Yeah. Oh, but, hey. I'm so glad I'm on mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the streets are filthy. Like, I feel uh, yeah. peace, prayers, and blessings to people in the dating pool. Yeah, man, it's piss, it's pissing shit in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> that water is definitely green. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, oh, yeah. yeah, with algae on top of it. For yeah. the for the older people, if you in that twenty five to thirty five range, yeah, young people, y'all probably got it made right now, but. Y'all, y'all yep. look here, y'all look here. I couldn't do it. Y'all going out there on dates right now, man, and get and look in the, and they ordering up all the food. And when the bill come, both of them sitting there looking at each other. <laughs> I, 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 invited you to, I invited you to dinner, and then I'm gonna look here and expect for you to pay. What kind of yeah. shit is that? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. The fuck? That's the new school, <laughs> man. That's the new school, brother. <sighs> yeah. I'm I, terrible. Call, hey, text day. message people asking them for money, and y'all just <laughs> met yesterday. I need two dollars for gas. What twenty dollars gas gonna get you today? Around the block. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> the down. See. Oh Damn. my God, man. Y'all, look at y'all. Look, look at women. Y'all got to stop accepting less than. Y'all don't heard it from everybody. Every major celebrity that talks about relationships and stuff. Y'all have to stop accepting less than. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I'm. You know, you, you got. Y'all got to understand that there's some people. And, and and CV, I, you know, I know you you going you with me on this, but look here, I'm but it's coming. So there's some people that's meant to be boyfriends, some people meant to be girlfriends, some people meant to be husbands, and somebody that's meant to be a wife. And what happens is oftentimes that boyfriend mess around and find one that's that that's meant to be a wife, and they that's not what they're meant to be. So them two people ain't gonna mesh, they ain't gonna work together. Vice versa, the other way, that's not gonna work because the actions are gonna be different. See, a wife has an expectation of the husband. The husband has an expectation of the wife, and they both operate within their roles. Boyfriend and girlfriend is free for all. It don't matter. I'm going to go over here, do this. I'm going to do this. No accountability, no nothing. And there's no cohesiveness, cohesiveness and there's no progress in that relationship because it it's not going anywhere. But we keep settling. We keep settling for that dude that, don't, that ain't about shit, won't keep a job, 
always out partying, doing whatever. You know, the day and age, you know, I'm, I'm a minority because I don't smoke. You know what I'm saying? But always smoking and drinking or what have you. You know, that's all they do. Ride around all day, pants hanging off their behinds. That's your style. That's one thing. But the context is there's no accountability to it. But you expect for that dude, when your tire, when your tire bald on your car, that dude, <laughs> oh, baby, uh, you, you need to get a tire. Instead of that dude taking your car to the damn shop and putting the damn tire on it. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference with that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know I, I walk past my wife's car every day. And every day I look down at them damn tires, make sure they good. <laughs> Yo, every ladies, day. why y'all be letting your tires go bald? Exactly. Man, Single, yeah. relationship. Them motherfuckers Hold be on. bald. Let's talk, about this. Let's talk about this gas. How the hell you let your damn car, you come home with your damn car on empty. And then hold on. Baby, can you take my car and put some gas in it? Can you take the risk? Call, call, I know, I know. I saw him. He sat back. I saw it. Yeah. Hold on. The light on in the car. Hold on. The fuck? How you made it home? That's about a gas station. Day home. That's a good warning. me. She said, hey, baby, uh, car, car, low gas. So I was like, let me go ahead. Because I don't know how to leave the house. Like, I work from home, so she drive more than me. And so I went in there. I was like, I already knew what time it was. She gave me the Gave me the go ahead text, so I went ahead and handled it. Oh my god! So yeah, I'm gonna yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop y'all and I'm gonna stop myself before I get in trouble. Um. <laughs> <laughs> she must be off to the side listening. No, to she's you. at she's at work, but I know she's she listens to the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you can't talk. So you can't talk about that gas tank because she come Ugh. home. I know, I know, I know. I come home. I'm gonna check the tires home. though. I'm gonna oh, check yeah. the tires tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> she should be good. Car new. But um, before we get out of here, um, any uh, suggestions or recommendations for those younger brothers out there, or even brothers who just aren't there yet in their lives about just conflict res- resolution? I mean, we. It's going to happen, y'all, whether it's at work, whether it's in the street, whether it's in your own household. Conflict is going to come about, and how you handle it is going to have a huge impact. Because one thing I will say about the black community, we have a long memory, especially when it comes to something negative. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to something negative. People will never let you forget and always remember what you did and tell you about what you did. You could do a billion things right but they will always remember what you did. So do y'all have any recommendations or just comments about just how to handle conflict? Man, know yourself. If you don't know yourself, stop and learn yourself. The, the fact of the matter is exactly what you said, Rob. People will remind you of who, of who you were. So those people that want to remind you of who you were don't need to be involved in you becoming who you want to be. You need to leave them. Got to leave them behind. And, and that I, I get that. If everybody, every time you see them, man, remember when you used to, man, we used to party, we used to do this. You know, I always get reminded, man. I used to, you know, I used to run down the road, out there on country roads with no, with no, no street lights. Like out there in the middle of the woods, it's pitch black dark. I used to race Jesus. and I would turn, I would turn the lights off on the car. Like I'd race with no headlights, middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Wild stuff, right? That's, That's a different a, kind of darkness, that. those of you who aren't yeah. from the country. Yeah. I mean, like pitch black, you know, that's that's how I win a, win a race. Cause we racing, we going down the road. I turn the lights off. So the other car, the other, the other guy couldn't see me. And I just stay on until we get to where we need to be, come up on them, get past them or get up, turn the lights on. I'm already ahead of them. That's wow. wild. But people want to remind me of the bullshit, the, the shit I used to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you, every time you see me, you got to take me back. Mm-hmm. That means I ain't moving forward. Mm-hmm. So guys, you gotta, you gotta stop letting people take you back to who you were so you can focus on getting where you need to be. If that means that you got to not answer the phone when your homeboy call, not respond when your homegirl reach out, not go to the party, not do this, do that. So you can find yourself because you can't resolve anything with anyone else until you've resolved the issues with yourself. That's deep. I like that. I like that. That's a gem right there, man. You got to put like clues bomb after that. I, gotta I gotta drop. find. I need a. I don't have a sound effect. I gotta, gotta find, drop that in or something, bro. You I gotta, gotta find the sound. Well, okay, yeah. I, this this all I got for that one. <laughs> hold on, wait, wait, hold on. We going free now. We looking. We got that shit now. Yeah, right there, right there. Yeah. 
but we we all out here trying to do it, man. We all out here trying. We we all out here trying to get ahead. And I say we all. The reality is all are not engaged at the same level. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know I'm gonna say this, and and you know I, I gotta defer, but you know with, whatever it is that we do, whatever you gotta do, and I you know I say this thing, and it's been something I, I've been repeating for the last few months now about your commitment level, your commitment to your your pers your perseverance, your commitment to what it is you're trying to do for yourself. You got to be whole hog. See, at breakfast time, you got the chicken, you got the hog. You know, we eat sauces, the bacon around here. You know, we country. That's what we do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the chicken lays an egg and leaves. They, they're contributing at breakfast, but that hog is committed. They had to give up an appendage. They had to give up their life in order to be on that breakfast plate. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. So we got to stop being chickens because we a whole bunch of damn chickens. We scared to do this. We scared to do that. This, here, that, and the third. We ain't committed to nothing. We show up, but we ain't we ain't engaged fully and we out. We got to be whole hogs. So you're talking about making a change or, or resolving issues in your life, how to deal with people and all that stuff, all that shit, everything you want to do, the success, everything that you want on the other side, you got to be whole hog. So I ask my I ask people around me all the time, are you, are you, are you a chicken or you a hog? Because if you're a chicken. I don't need you. I need you to get the fuck away from me because I'm a hog over here. <laughs> so, that's what's up. I ain't even mad at it. I, look, I, well, to kind of piggyback off what you said, Cohen, um, you know, just that whole people bringing the old you back up. Funny thing happened. My wife went to Trap Bingo. Uh, she used to go to Winthrop and it was hosted by a dude uh, that's in my frat. What that, kind of bingo? Uh, trap Bingo. Trap. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to make sure I heard it correctly. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> so they uh he hosted a event or whatever. And um she was asking for a free shirt. And he was like, Oh no, man, I can't give you no shirt. Carl liked the fight. And then another dude was there, and um, you know, he had like he he overstepped the boundaries with my ex-girlfriend. So I ran up on him too. And uh back in the day. So he was like, Oh no, I can't talk to you. Carl liked the fight. So my past <laughs> <laughs> I say that to say my past still follows me. But to that point is back then those fights were about ego. And you know, the one thing that I, you know, from this situation with Will and this this, it's hard for me to say exactly what what was bothering Will at that moment. In my eyes, looking at it, I don't I think it was less about the alopecia and I think it was more about his ego with all of the stuff that's already in the media. Um and I think that, that whole thing was about ego. And I, I think if someone wants to resolve conflict, it just needs to come from the right place. Like, why are we fighting? Why are you fighting for this? And as long as it's not about your own personal pride, and there's really a reason for you to be fighting, then, you know, handle that. But if you're just fighting because you feel like you need to feel like you're the man in that moment, then sit your ass down. So that's pretty much what, you know, what I would tell anybody right there. If you don't know, if you don't know you a man, I, you know, I have this thing, you know, Carl, man, I don't, I don't tell people I'm a man. That's for somebody else to, to they should know that. They should know that. We ain't got to, we shouldn't have to prove our manhood. What the fuck we, who the fuck we proving something to? You got to exactly. prove a manhood. You know what I'm saying? Because a man know, know that he a man. And any man that see a real man, know a real man. Problem is these dudes out here, man, they ain't men, they punks. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? You know, they, just because you carry a gun don't make you hard. You know, I've had people, yo, you, yo, you need, you need to be strapped. No, I don't need to be strapped. I'm good. The fuck, I need a gun, a gun for shit. It, you know, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be. But we ain't got to do certain certain things. We ain't got to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people should just know. Or they, let me phrase that. They know. When I see you, I know who you are. I know what you are. You know what I'm saying? And in turn, people have to figure out who they set, who they are themselves. But anyway. Man, look here. I'm man, I'm enjoying this conversation. Yeah. Man. Real quick, real. That was a good conversation, man. This, this is a great conversation, man. Um, if y'all have nothing else, I'm gonna end on a on a super duper positive note and talk about what was you know overshadowed by the incident. Um, but Corwin and Carl, I owe both of y'all interviews. Um, Corwin, well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have heard me mention Corwin on here several times. Yes, this is that dude, that guy. Uh, who taught me everything I know about the real estate game and taught me a lot about life. Um, so I have to formally interview him so y'all can get to know, you know, even more about him and what he does and how he handles business. But I just could not resist having him on this episode. And again, we're going to have Carl Van on as well to talk about some of the things that he's doing and to share more details about that. 
But to end on a super duper positive note, um, let me cue up a little bit of music. So some black excellence definitely took place uh, on that same night. So first and foremost, um, the production team for the Oscars was an all black production team headed by Will Packer and Shayla Cohen. So that was historic. Uh, Danny Glover received an honorary Oscar for his political activism. Uh, Will Smith, of course, won his oct- uh, won the Best Actor um, award or won an Oscar for Best Actor in King Richard. Quest Love uh, won an Oscar for Best Documentary. That documentary is called Summer of Soul. Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson, ladies and gentlemen, got an honorary Oscar for a lifetime achievement, and it was presented to him by Denzel Washington. Um, Ariana DeBose, she was Best Supporting Actress, and she's an Afro-Latina sister, so I wanted to shout her out. And the Queen of Basketball, that is the story of Lucia Harris. She scored the first basket in women's Olympic history and was the only woman ever to be drafted to the NBA that is a black woman. That was actually produced by Shaq and Steph Curry. That won for Best Short Documentary. So I wanted to definitely give it up for some black excellence. Yeah, so a lot of black excellence happened, you know, so I definitely wanted to uh, give some uh, credit there and shine some light there. I definitely had to uh, (laughs) take a step back from all this. And I was like, all right, let me Google, because I kept seeing Samuel L. Jackson. I love Samuel L. Jackson. And then that's when I saw the other people, and I was like, all right. Thank you for sharing those awards too, man, because, I mean, honestly, I forgot about half of that stuff that happened. I mean. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) see, and I was, which I don't get, the life, like the Danny Glover one and the Samuel L. Jackson wasn't televised. I don't understand. I, I, I don't know how to prioritize those things. Yeah, they must have did that on commercial break. That yeah. part, oh. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I heard the Oscars is very long. But uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, oh, man. CV Corwin, thank you so much again for joining me. Um, and just really dropping a lot of knowledge from the perspective of two married black men who have some real life experience out here. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've learned something tonight. Uh, Take a step back, think about it. Don't be so quick to judge. Don't be so quick to say who's right or who's wrong. And um, look in that mirror every now and again and and check yourself, okay? (laughs) Think about who you are and what you got going on before you comment on someone else's situation. Um, Y'all brothers got any special shout outs, anything y'all want to promote or talk about? Okay, this is about you, brother. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, this is about you, man. All right, (laughs) just just making sure. Just making sure. But anyway, like I said, y'all, I'm going to have these two gentlemen back on for individual interviews so we can get into more of what they're doing. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves physically, mentally, and financially. And we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.